Welcome to Gunsmoke Theater. I'm Dennis Daly. Very few radio or television programs had such an impact on their medium that they changed everything. One of those shows was Gunsmoke. Yes, it ran 20 years on television, but the TV show was a child of the radio show, which itself ran nearly a decade. Sit back now for the next hour as we go back into the archives and play some of those great episodes of the show that changed everything, Gunsmoke. It's a great deal of fun to look back on a show that happened so many years ago, but to be able to look at it from beginning to end and see how it evolved. We're all the way up to winter of the second year of Gunsmoke. And the shows this time around are from November of 1953, where Gunsmoke finally has a sponsor. Now, Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet, is proud to present Gunsmoke. just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Take it easy, Mom. You know your young folks are going to eat when you give them sugar crinkles for breakfast. Yes, boys and girls love sugar crinkles. And no wonder, it's the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Now, the reason sugar crinkles suit young folks to a T is this. Some sugar-coated cereals they've tried seem too sweet. Others don't seem sweet enough. But when they dip their first spoonful of sugar crinkles, mmm, they've discovered a sugar-coated cereal that's just right sweet. And say, those young folks of yours love to dip into the pack and eat sugar crinkles as a snack, too. So better get several packages. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. I got a horse to saddle, Mr. Dillon. I'm so hungry I could eat a whole hog. Well, all the hog you got this morning's cooking on that stick right there, Chester. Is it done? <laughs> that depends on how hungry you are. It's done. <laughs> sure will be good to get back to Dodge tonight and sleep in a bed again. Well, civilization has made you soft, Chester. Mm. Maybe so, but I get mighty tired of using my back for a mattress and my belly for a covering. <laughs> Obviously, Chester, you were born for greater things than rooting around on the prairie and living in the rain. It hasn't been raining, Mr. Dillon. No, no, it hasn't. But it will, Chester. Sooner or later, it'll rain. Yes, sir. Wish you'd brought some more bacon. Say, don't old man Granby live around here? Maybe we could borrow a little from him. Well, according to what I've always heard, old Granby wouldn't loan anybody anything. Mm. You really think he's a rich miser, like to say? Oh, I don't know, Chester. Well, sometimes a man's entirely different from his reputation. I only met Granby once or twice. He seemed like a nice enough old fellow, though. Well, I wouldn't want to live out here all alone with nothing but a few horses for company. Oh, he's used to it. Well, even if he does have a lot of money hid away, there's no place to spend it out here. Granby's pretty old for the pleasures Dodge has to offer, Chester. Well, 
I hope I am never that old. At the rate you're burning yourself out, Chester, you never will be, so don't worry about it. Oh, now, Mr. Dillon, I live mighty quiet for a young fellow who's free and still full of blood. <laughs> sure. Hey, look over there. Huh? Now, that string of dust laying right on the ground there. Yeah, I've been watching it, Chester. It's not on the ground, though. There's a dry wash runs along there. Somebody's driving stock down it. Maybe it's old man Gramby. That may be. Let's go say hello, huh? All right, sure. If it is old man Granby, we might just ask him about a little bacon, huh? Well, we can ask. There's no harm in that. Come on. Now, that's horses down there, Chester. Yes, sir. I can see their heads now. I don't see anybody driving them. Now, he'll be along in a minute. Now, let's wait here. Yep. Oh. There he comes. Yeah. Hello! He stopped. That's not old, Granby. Let's ride down and say hello anyway. That's Granby's brand on those horses, though. He must have hired him a hand. Yeah, maybe. Hello. Hello. Are you working for Granby? I ain't working for nobody, mister. Oh? And where is he? Where is who? Granby. I don't know no Granby. Well, those are his horses you're driving. Oh, they are? Yeah. I ain't driving them. What do you mean? They got ahead of me in the wash here, that's all. I see. You a cowboy? Yeah, sure. I'm a cowboy. Well, you don't look like one. You don't ride like one, either. You're asking the questions, mister. No decent cowboy would run another man's horses down a dry wash just because he didn't want to get up on the bank and ride around them. I told you, they got in front of me is all. How come you're not carrying a gun? Does a man have to carry a gun? No. I'll bet you're the only man within a thousand miles of here who isn't carrying one. Maybe I got a better conscience than the rest of you. Maybe. Look, mister, you've run those horses about five miles off of old Granby's place. You want to give us a hand, we'll run them back. I'm in a hurry. It won't take long. The old man might be a couple of days finding them if we don't. You worry about him. i got to get in to Dodd. We'll ride in with you. Afterwards. I ain't going to do it. Look a lot better if you did. I, uh, I'd like to, mister, but I can't wait. I'm leaving now. So long. You gonna let him go, Mr. Wait Dillon? a minute, Chester. I'll let him hear what lead sounds like. No, don't shoot! Don't shoot me! All right, then ride back here. Don't kill me, mister. I'm not gonna kill you. Unless you try to run away. Why would I try to run away? You just did. Chester. Yes, sir? Ride down the bank and have those horses off. Start them back up the wash. We'll be out of here by the time they're back. All right, Mr. Dillon. You stay right close to me, fella. Don't try anything smart. When we get to Granby's, if he says it's okay, then you can go wherever you like. I don't know Granby. Never been there. Well, we'll show you the way. Come on, let's get up on the bank. Oh, 
Old man Granby can find his horses all right now, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. But I want this cowboy here to meet him. We'll see if he's in the house. I'll wait for you. Get off that horse, fella. Go on. That's better. Come on. We'll take a look. Well, what are you waiting for? Nothing. You go ahead, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Looks like I'll have to herd this man in. You've been kind of balky ever since we ran into you, mister. I don't like being dragged around. I never did. I just want you to meet old Granby. He'll be grateful for you. Up and run his horses back here. I know what you think, mister. You think I was stealing them horses. Well, I never heard of the old man. I was never near this place. Yeah, so you told me. But you're here now. I ain't afraid of you or nobody. Then let's go into the house. Come on. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Old man Granby, he... He's in there. Well, what's wrong? Right in the room there, Mr. Dillon. He's hanging there. What? Somebody's gone and hung him right in his own house. I, I don't want to see him anymore. You go take a look. Pull your gun and hold it on this man, Chester. If he makes a move, shoot him. Yes, sir. Now, you just stand there real quiet like. I ain't gonna do nothing. You sure ain't. Just because I happen to be in the country don't mean I killed nobody. Mr. Dillon will decide about that. Who is this Mr. Dillon, anyway? He's a United States Marshal, that's who. A Marshal? Looks like you run into the wrong people, fella. I'll hold your gun, Chester. Search it. All right, sir. Here. Get around. All, All right. right. Turn around. The house is all torn up. He must have been looking for old Granby's money. I was never in that house. There's nothing on him. Not a thing. All right, Chester, here's your gun. Catch it. Thank you. All right, now, what's your name, fella? Tremble. Joe Tremble. Where are you from? Up north. Up north where? All over. What are you doing down here, Tremble? Making a change. Yeah, sure. And some cowboy you ran into told you about Granby being rich. So you came here and kicked the old man around and hung him. And then tried to find the money. That's a lie. This is the first time I was ever near the place. I'm sure you did it, Trumbull, but I wish I had more evidence. A court of law just might not convict you the way things stand. You gonna let me go? No. I'm arresting you. And you're gonna stand trial. And I'll do my best to see you hung. I didn't do it, I tell you. And I'll go free, too. You'll see. There's something mighty wrong about you, Trimble, and I can't figure it at all. But I'll sure find out. Mother, it does your heart good, I know, when your young folks eat all of their breakfast cereal. That's why I'm so happy to tell you about new Sugar Crinkles. Sugar Crinkles, you know, is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Crisp golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice. They make breakfast more fun than a circus. Why, young folks love Sugar Crinkles so much, they disappear like magic. Now, you've had experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet to you and others that just don't seem sweet enough to the youngsters. Well, what a wonderful surprise sugar crinkles will be to your whole family. For new sugar crinkles really are just right sweet. Remember, sugar crinkles make great snacks, too. And there's even more good news about sugar crinkles. 
Right now, there's a full-size package of charms, that wonderful fruit-flavored candy in every special package of sugar crinkles your dealer has. Ten delicious fruit-flavored charms, free of extra cost to you. So hurry. Get sugar crinkles soon as you can. Now back to Gunsmoke. We let Joe Tremble dig a grave up behind the house. Then we laid old Granby in it and covered him with dirt. I was pretty sure now that the old man had never had an extra dollar in his life and that he'd been killed for no reason at all. Anyway, Tremble had done a pretty thorough job looking for the money and he'd found nothing. On the ride into Dodge, I tried to figure out just what he was. But he didn't seem to fit anywhere. He wasn't a cowboy or a hunter or a gambler or even just a drifter. After we got him locked up in jail that night, Doc and I went over to the Texas Trail for a drink with Kitty. And I was telling him about it. Now then, uh, this fella Trimble, uh, how old is he? Oh, around 25, I guess, Doc. Mm -hmm. Then he couldn't be running away from home. <laughs> no, he's a little old for that, Kitty. Well, anyway, they'll hang him. Well, I hope the judge agrees with you, Doc. Why shouldn't they? All I got so far is circumstantial evidence. Well, then you should have shot him out on the prairie. It's a good thing you're not a lawman. Doc. Well, maybe if I were, there'd be fewer killings around here. Uh, I, I doubt that, Doc. You going up to Hayes for the trial, Matt? Yeah, I'll have to, Kitty. That'll take a week, I suppose. Oh, Bob. What do you ask? Nothing, only you've just been away for ten days. Well, I have to earn a living, Kitty. You could make more money gambling right here in Dodge. Oh, now, Kitty, don't start that. Good evening, Marshal. Oh, Major. Ah, it's Kitty, Doc. Good evening, Major. Oh, I do, Major. I'd like a word with you, Marshal. Uh, sure, Major. <laughs> so we can go over to the bar there. All right. Uh, I'll be back, Kitty. No hurry, Matt. Doc's got a lot of money. Oh, I, now I'll buy you one drink, Kitty. Just one drink, and that's all. Well, it's a start, Doc. <laughs> Let's go, Major. I had to come to Dodge on other business, Marshal. But I wanted to pass the word to you that we're looking for a man. Oh, the Army? Yes, a deserter. Oh? Not from Fort Dodge. Where was he stationed, Major? He was with the 7th Cavalry at Fort Lincoln. Oh, up in the Dakotas. Yeah, and for some reason, they think he headed south. Now, I don't have much of a description of him, just that he was a private, about 425, curly blonde hair, and uh, he had a scar on his left hand. Yeah, that fits. What's his name, Major? He enlisted as Joe Gould, but he's known to have used the name Trimble. Uh-huh. Well, he's right here in Dodge. What? I got him locked up in jail. <laughs> well, uh, that's fine, Marshal, but how did you know? I think he murdered an old man who lived a day's ride north of here. I'm going to have him tried for it. Well, that won't be necessary now, Marshal. I'll take over custody of him. No, no. Hmm? Then he'd be tried at Fort Lincoln for desertion. I want him tried for murder. And I got to be there to present the evidence. You could go up to Fort Lincoln. No, the Dakotas are out of my territory, Major. Besides, this is a civil crime. The Army wants that man, Marshal. I'm sorry, Major. He's going to be tried in Hayes first. He is still a soldier, even if he did desert. Well, if the judge lets him off, you can have him. But not otherwise. Major, he tortured and hung an innocent old man, and I'm going to do my best to see him punished for it. Well, I'll have to take this up with my superiors, Marshal. Uh, you better hurry. I'm going to Hayes with him tomorrow. I hope you won't regret this, Marshal. I won't, Major. Not if Trimble is properly punished. I won't.
I didn't wait till morning, but started out for Hayes with Joe Trimble that night. The trial lasted a week, and in spite of all the arguments I made, the judge finally decided that there wasn't enough real evidence to convict him. I even tried to make Trimble confess, but he was too smart for that. So there was nothing to do but bring him back, turn him over to the Army. I sent word to Fort Dodge, and the next morning, the Major himself appeared to take him into custody. Well, Marshal, it looks as though you didn't have much of a civil case after all. Uh, he killed old Granby. I know he did, Major. But after all, the law is the law. Yes, and in the Army, orders are orders. I'm just sorry your judge didn't convict him after all. Oh, is that so? Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? Bring Tremble out, huh? All right, sir. Major, I'll give the Army credit for one thing. Uh -huh. What's that? Tribble and I rode back some 80 miles yesterday, and when we got here, he <laughs> wanted to sit up and play cards with Chester. Uh, yeah, there may be some bad men in the cavalry, Marshal, but they're all tough. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. Well, he's yours, Major. Private Trimble, sir. You're under military arrest, Private. Not privileged to salute. Besides, you enlisted as Private Gould, not Trimble. Yes, sir. Report to the guard outside. Yes, sir. Uh, just a minute, Trimble. You uh, know that you're mighty lucky, don't you? You should have died for what you've done. I told you I'd go free, Marshal. It'll catch up with you someday, Trumbull. It always does somehow. That's all I wanted to say. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Marshal. I'll be getting along. Oh, uh, Major, mm -hmm. uh, you said that uh, you were sorry that the judge didn't convict him. Why have you changed your mind? Well, I have orders from General Terry to return him to the Dakotas, to Fort Lincoln. Well, he'll be tried there, but he won't be hung for just desertion. Well, oddly enough, Marshal, he won't even be tried. For some months, anyway. He won't? No. It seems that the 7th Cavalry needs every man available. They're leaving Fort Lincoln on an expedition against the Sioux in the northern Cheyenne. Oh, the Sioux, huh? Yeah. I wonder if old Sitting Bull is still the chief medicine man with him. Sitting Bull? Yeah. No, I never heard of him. But I expect the 7th will be heading into Montana territory. Well, if they're after Sitting Bull's tribe, they will. He's always had a large camp over on the Little Bighorn. That's so? Yeah. Oh, by the way, who's in command of the 7th Cavalry now? Oh, an officer I served under a couple of years. I never did care for him. A General Custer. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards and John Daner. Harley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Ken Peters speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes. This time around, two shows from November of 1953, the second year of Gunsmoke. And I tend to think these two are recordings of rehearsals 
because you can tell they were mastered on disc because of the surface noise. Let's go back to the beginning and notice how they don't have William Conrad's microphone quite turned on yet when the show begins. Since the show was sent out on recording tape, if there had been that much of a problem in the real recording session, they would have fixed it. That's why I think this is a rehearsal, but listen as the engineer scrambles to get William Conrad's mic on. And in the territory on the west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Kind of fun when you hear that happen. And the other thing is, in the tens of thousands of hours of old-time radio I've listened to, I have heard darn few mistakes. Now the second of our Gunsmoke programs from November of 1953. Now post-toasties, the heap-good cornflakes, is proud to present Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say there, next time you hear a crackling noise in your kitchen, better get up and investigate. Maybe somebody just couldn't wait for his breakfast of crackling crisp post-toasties. And that's a treat you shouldn't miss. Post-toasties, you know, are the heap-good cornflakes. Why, after one taste, I'll bet anything you'll agree with me. Post Toasties is just the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. There's nothing quite like sweet kernel corn flavor when it's toasted right in. Toasted into crisp, fresh cornflakes. Man, oh man, that's Post Toasties. Heap good cornflakes. Better try them. And now, gun smoke. Starring William Conrad. figure it'll take us to drive this herd into Dodge after we cross the Cimarron, Larson. Well, it depends on how hard you want to push him, Brant. I hired you because I ain't been up here before. How far is it to Dodge? Oh, 50 mile, maybe. Ah. Five easy days, then. I don't want to bring them steers in too poor. It's the men that's got poor this trip, not the steers. Ah, there's a lot of juice left in the men. Too much, maybe. Look at him. Oh, it's that old Indian that rode in a while ago. They're just having a little fun with him. They better take it easy. No telling how many warriors he's got waiting somewhere. Hey, Cotton! Yeah! Tell that Indian to come over here. I want to talk to him. Sure, Brad. Yeah, he probably just wants a steer out of the herd. Well, I'm tired of giving good beef away. You, boss, my name is Tobiel. Tobiel, huh? What do you want, Tobiel? I guide cattle on trail to Dodge. We don't need any guide, Chief. I know the trail. I have letter from men in Dodge. Yeah. You read. Letter tell you how good guide Tobiel is. Let's see your letter. Yeah. Old time guide. Many years with army. 
big scout. Well, why ain't you still with the army then? Too old now. What can guide cattle on trail to Dodge? Very cheap. <laughs> Why, you old liar. Phobia never lie. No? Listen to this, Lyson. To whom it may concern, the name of this noble red man is Tobiel. He's a liar, a beggar, and a thief. What he wouldn't steal, a hound pup couldn't pull out of a tan yard. Give him some cold grub or a three-cent drink, if you have any about you, and then run him out of camp. <laughs> Signed, R. Durbin, J.C. Weiser. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they sure wrote him a good letter. No, 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 letter can't say that. They, my friends, they write letter, help me get job. What'd you try to steal off of them? Tobiel never steal. No? Well, I'll take the word of a white man any day. Larson, you heard what the letter says. Have the boys run them off. Wait, let her lie. They fool me. Tobiel, man with much honor among white men in army. This ain't the army. Run them off, I said. Come on, chief. I leave. I leave. Alone. You leave, all right. And get going. Yeah. But these men die for this. If anybody dies, it'll be you. Here he is, boys. Let's send him down the trail. Here comes Miss Kitty. Ah, so it is. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Mass Chester. Miss Kitty? You're going to work a little early, aren't you? No, I'm just getting a breath of air. <laughs> sure is going to be a nice evening, ain't it? For you, maybe. Oh, is there anything wrong, Kitty? Just that trail hurt across the river. Dodge will soon be full of drunken cowboys, all looking for trouble. <laughs> we'll handle them, Miss Kitty, don't you worry. Er, <coughs> at least Mr. Dillon will. Shooting them's easy. I gotta talk to them. Oh, you can always quit, Kitty. Sure. Do what? Teach Sunday school? <laughs> well, you might. You talk like a Texan yourself, Miss. You know what one of them told me once? He said I reminded him of his mother. He really said it. Well, that sounds nice, Miss Kitty. I thought so, too, Chester. Till he got real drunk and told me his mother was the first woman to be hung south of San Antonio. She was? Who hung her? Probably he did. Oh, now, Miss Kitty, no man would hang his own mama. Why, it just ain't... Marshal? Yeah. We come to warn you. Oh? Uh -huh. Warn me about what, mister? My name ain't Mister, it's Weiser. My partner's name here is Derby. I can tell him my own name, Weiser. Shut up. No. Marshal, that Indian's going to get himself hurt. What are you talking about? That Indian, across the street there. See him? No. Uh -huh. Now, that's Tobiel. You know him? What's the trouble, Weiser? He keeps following us around. Says he's going to kill us. Tobiel? That doesn't sound like him. Well, it's true. It is, you, you ask me. He's been haunting us for four days. Just stands around staring at us and saying we're going to die. I'd have shot him long ago, but I hear that's against the law around here. Where you men from? Wyoming Territory. Where'd you know Tobiel? We've been in Dodge a couple of weeks. Seen him around here. Now, what's the trouble between you? Well, we... <laughs> we played a little joke on him, is all. Made him mad, I guess. We told him he could get a job guiding trail herds into Dodd. Give him a letter. Yeah. He thought the letter said how good he was, but it really said he was a thief and to run him out of camp. 
I see. <laughs> and he tried to use your letters, is that it? I guess so. <laughs> Went away for a couple of days, and since he got back, he keeps saying he's going to kill us. It's getting on my nerves, Marshal. I'll shoot him, sure. You'll shoot anybody, and you'll hang for it, wiser. Now, wait here. I'll go talk to him. I gotta go to work, Matt. Okay, Kitty. I'll see you later. And you two heroes. You're pretty funny. I hope he does kill you. Why, you... Hold it, Wiser. Watch him, Chester. Yes, sir. Hello, Tobiel. Hello, Marshal. Tobiel, those two men over there say that you threatened to kill them. Is that true? Did I? They told me the story, Tobiel. I'm sorry it happened. But uh, you can't kill men for that. Tobiel, old but still proud. You know what will happen if you do kill them, don't you? You'll go to jail and probably hang for it. No. Tobiel, never in jail. Man with much honor. Look, uh, Tobiel, I got no use for Wiser and Durbin. Neither one of them could be much good, but the law's the law, and... Tobiel no kill. Tobiel's medicine kill. Make very strong medicine against them. Well, you work all the medicine you want, but don't you do any killing yourself... And stay away from them, Tobiel. You're making them jumpy. There might be trouble if you don't. Tobiel, not afraid. They carry guns, Tobiel. All you've got's a knife. Remember that. Uh, I remember. All right. Tell him, Marshal. Yeah. You men didn't understand him. He's not threatening to kill you himself. He's making Indian medicine against you, that's all. Well, well, then why does he keep say, saying we're, we're going to die? And why is he always following us around? He thinks his medicine will kill you. I guess he wants to be there when it does. There's no harm in it. And I'm warning you again, both of you. You leave him alone. You do anything to that old man and I'll throw you in jail. Look, Marshal, that letter that... Uh started all this. That was Weiser's idea, not mine. It sure was. Any idea we've ever had has been mine. Oh? I never did need you, Derby. Oh, is that so? Who, who did your dirty work up to Cheyenne? You did. Yeah. You fool. I sure did, and you still owe me for it. Ah, shut up. So you ain't gonna do nothing about that Indian marshal. I know Tobiel pretty well, and I'll personally guarantee his word... Nobody's going to do anything about him, including you. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, good morning, Chester. Uh, good morning. Uh, Mr. Dillon, they just carried that fellow Weiser up to docks. What? Well, what happened to him? I don't know. Well, let's go see. Did you see him, Chester? No, sir. I just saw a couple men coming downstairs, and they said I'd better go get you. That's all they said. Oh, hello, man. What happened to Weiser, Doc? Well, for one thing, he's been stabbed, Matt. Oh? Bad? Bad enough to kill him. The men who carried him up here said they found him lying in an alley this morning. He's been dead, oh, three, four hours, I'd say. And there's something else, Matt. Take a look here. What? Somebody hit him on top of the head, Doc. No. No. They didn't hit him. He's been scalped, Chester. Indian style. (laughs) 
Say, how are morning appetites at your house? Well, if they're pretty drowsy, here's a real good way to wake them up. Set a bowl full of Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes at everybody's place. Just watch your folks take notice when they see how crisp Post Toasties are. And wait till they taste that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted in. Bet your whole tribe will agree with you. Post Toasties are the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. And here's a thought if you'd like to make a good thing even better. Try topping Post Toasties with your favorite fruit. You'll find that's a mighty good way to start the day. Fact is, it's a downright delicious way. So next time you shop, be sure to ask for Post Toasties. They're the heap good cornflakes. You'll see. Post Toasties heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good cornflakes. Post Toasties heap good cornflakes. Now back to Gunsmoke. It was pretty hard for me to accept the idea that Tobiel had murdered and scalped Weiser. But the evidence seemed plain enough. The old Kiowa had been a highly valued army scout for over 30 years. And then had moved into a little hut at the edge of Dodge when he grew too old for active service. He lived quietly. And had never given anyone any trouble at all before... But Weiser and Durbin had injured his pride with their so-called joke. And Tobiel had evidently reacted in the only way he knew. Now I had to arrest him. Chester and I walked out to his hut. And just as we reached it, Durbin came running up. We told you, Marshal, didn't we? We told you that engine was going to kill somebody. Did you see it happen, Durbin? No, no, I... I went to bed. Why, sir, he, he was doing a little gambling. That dirty red skin, he got him on the way home. It hasn't been proved, he did it. Well, of course he did it. Who else should scalp a man? I don't know. Well, here, look at that here, Marshal. Look, right here. That, hanging right onto his hut like, like he was bragging about it. Well, Mr. Dillon... That's a scalp. Yeah. He's drying it in the sun is what he's doing. The murdering devil. You two stay here. I'll see if he's inside. Yes, sir. Come outside, Tobiel. I got you now, Tobiel. Let's string him up, Marshal. Right here. Shut up, Devin. Tobiel, did you kill Weiser last night? Weiser? Killed? Stabbed with a knife and scalped. He died. Durbin there, he died too. You see, Marshal? He even admits I told you to stay out of this, Durbin. Now, tell me straight, Tobiel. Did you kill him? Tobiel, no kill. Tobiel's medicine kill. And what's Weiser's scalp doing there? Scalp? Right there. Yeah. Weiser's scalp, all right. Where's your knife, Tobiel? Here, my knife. Look out, Marshal. He'll use it. No, he won't. Give me your knife, Tobiel. Uh. That looks clean to me. Wait a minute. Well, of course, he's had plenty of time to get it clean. You think I kill Weiser with knife? Did you? Medicine kill Weiser. Tobiel, no kill. 
Now, Tobil, I'm going to have to arrest you. You'll have to go to jail. Jail? No. Tobil, man with too much honor for jail. I'm sorry, Tobil, but you'll get a trial. Well, let's hang him now, Marshal. Indians don't need no trial. I'm the law here, Durbin, and don't you start anything like that. Big disgrace. Tobil in jail. Yeah, I know, but I... I can't help it. Chester... Get that scalp. We'll need it for evidence. Yes, sir. You ready to go to supper, Matt? Yeah, I'll be right with you, Doc. Uh, Chester, you better stay here and watch Tobiel, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you can go eat when I get back. I'll see you later. Yes, sir. Well, I hear Tobiel's pretty unhappy about being locked up, Matt. Yeah, I had a long talk with him, Doc. I'm afraid he's going to be locked up for a long time. Oh? Why is that, Matt? Well, no judge will hang him on circumstantial evidence. But he'll probably go to prison. He hasn't any kind of an alibi, Doc. None at all. And if I know Tobiel, he'd rather hang than be in prison. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. What's that? It came from the jail. Come on. Mr. Gillen? What happened, Chester? Somebody shot Tobiel right through the bar. Is he dead? He sure looked it. Let me take a look at him. All right, Doc. Get out the front, Chester, and come up the alley. Yell if you see anybody. I'll cover the back. Yes, sir. Mr. Dillon? All right, I'm coming, Chester. What is it? I saw Durbin. Oh? He ran out of the next alley and went into the Alphaganza there. All right, let's go get him. It must have been him that done it. Sure looks like it. There he is, over at the bar. Get out of the way, Chester. Yes, sir. Darvin! You're under arrest, Durbin. Unbuckle your gun belt and drop it on the floor. What for, Marshal? For shooting Tobiel. Yeah, I seen Chester standing there when I come out the alley. Should have shot him, too. Never mind the talk. Drop your gun. No. Shooting Tobiel was a bad enough mistake, Durbin. You finding out I did it was... See, I figured Tobiel must have saw me get wiser, and at the trial he, he he'd, he'd have started talking. No, he was home alone, making medicine against you. He had no alibi at all. Then I I killed him for nothing. If you hadn't killed him, he'd have probably been convicted, and you'd have gone free. Uh, look, Marshal, you can't. Prove that I, I killed Weiser. No. <laughs> well, and I ain't gonna hang for shooting no Injun, not me. Don't try it, Durbin. Why not? <laughs> You hit him both times, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Want me to take care of it? No. Somebody else can do it. Let you and me go give Tobiel a real fine burying, huh? 
I figure we kind of owe it to him. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. Say, Mother, want to see your small fry eat a better breakfast than ever? Well, may I suggest that you dish him up some sugar crinkles to start with? Sugar crinkles, you know, make breakfast more fun than a circus. Sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. It's high time to forget these sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet to you and those others that don't seem sweet enough to the kids. Just pour out crisp golden sugar crinkles... And see how just right sweet a sugar-coated cereal can be. Just right sweet. Be sure to get several packages of sugar crinkles, because they're great for snacks. Kids love them that way. Kids love them anyway. Try sugar crinkles, and you'll love them too. Remember, new sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Ralph Moody, Byron Kane, Frank Gerstel, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Ken Peters speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. You know, I mention it on just about every show, but it amazes me the wealth of talent that Norman MacDonald and John Meston were able to draw on as secondary characters for Gunsmoke. The people we heard in this episode, Frank Gerstel, Ralph Moody, and of course Lawrence Dobkin, well, they just had an acting style that was so natural and because each of them could play a variety of different characters, they could actually be on week after week after week, and we didn't tire of them because they sounded different each time. The use of this stable of CBS actors in Los Angeles to be the characters on Gunsmoke is very reminiscent of the stable of actors that Jack Webb had doing Dragnet. Uh, many of his good friends, including close friend Stacy Harris, who played the hero in the network series dealing with the FBI and was often the heavy on Dragnet, he was called on a lot to be on those shows. So why would someone such as Norman MacDonald, the director of Dragnet, keep hiring the same people over and over again? Well, he felt comfortable working with them and without having them audition, he knew exactly what they could do. By the way, the product sponsoring the two shows we've heard in this time around are kind of interesting. Sugar Crinkles, for example. Well, the modern-day products, Fruity Pebbles and Cocoa Pebbles, are kind of reincarnations of some of those other cereals, including Sugar Rice Crinkles. And so sugar rice crinkles didn't sell very well. The product was phased out. And even with the popularity of gun smoke, I guess it didn't help the sales very much at all. We are following the evolution of gun smoke from an early show in which in the auditions, Matt Dillon was called Mark Dillon, up through the nine-year run of a show that indeed did revolutionize broadcasting. And that's it for this time around. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for joining me on Gunsmoke Theater. 
as we go back into the archives to play more of the episodes of the radio show that changed everything for the better. Gunsmoke, right here on YouTube.